In this video, we will learn how to get from joint PDF to joint CDF. PDF stands for probability density function, CDF stands for cumulative distribution function. The reason why we want to get from joint PDF to joint CDF is because we can't really do much with the uh, joint probability density function. So for instance here, um, e to the power of minus um, x plus y is a joint PDF which captures the um, two underlying variables, i.e. Um, time to the next, next shark and croc attack. Okay? But in this form, we can't really derive any meaningful prob probabilities. So say we wanted to know what are the probabilities that both shark and croc will attack this year. Well, this function Unfortunately, we can't use uh, operate on it directly. We have to transform it into uh, something called joint CDF. And um, once we have uh, achieved this goal, we can actually read uh, from the graph. We can calculate from the from the CDF function directly the probabilities of interest. So, how do we perform this transformation? How do we get from small f of x to big f of x? Okay. We get there using uh, this uh, transformation here in the red box and you will notice um, that to do this transformation we first have to change the variables of integration. So if our original function was a function of f of x and y we will change it to say u and v and we'll integrate this double integral with respect to u and v. Also please note that the upper range of integration here uh, needs to be x and y. The lower limit of integration will be, here in this case, negative infinity, but we will adjust it accordingly depending on the definition of the random variables. For instance, in our example here, our variables were defined for x and y greater than zero. So we will be effectively replacing these two with a zero and zero because time can time to the next shark or croc attack can't be negative so we have to adjust it accordingly okay so there are just two things three things to remember keep the upper limit of integration as x and y and change the variables in the function that you are given to u and v and integrate it with respect to u and v the lower limit of integration will change also depending on the formulation of the variables. Okay, so let's see how this is done. Yet again, we come back to the same old uh, exponential function, uh, e to the power of e to the power of minus x plus y. So the first step to get from joint PDF to joint CDF, we, the first step we have to do is obviously change these variables, and we replace this one with u, and we replace press y with v. And the same here, we have to obviously change the um, variables of integration. Yeah. Now you will notice that I plugged in x and y as our as my l upper limit of integration. The reason why I've done this is because the function that we will recover from this uh, double integral will be a function of x and y alone. Okay. So we will drop these variables u and v uh, to uh, x and y. And obviously my lower limit of integration is zero because that's how uh, here my variables are defined. Now e to the power of minus u and v can be written as a product of two functions because we first tackle the first integral which is with respect uh, to u we can move u to the power of v uh, in the middle uh, I outside the second integral because this is just like a constant yeah we are integrating with respect to u and therefore uh, v will behave like a constant so we can move it in front of the integral and now here we solve this uh, first integral uh, we replace so we, we when we evaluate this antiderivative obviously we um, deal with the upper limit of integration first which was defined as y the lower limit of integration is zero and it ha it turns out that uh, we get something like this okay from the first integral because when uh, we have e to the power of uh, zero this is just going to be one okay so this is uh, this whole expression becomes just one minus e to the power of minus y and we do 
the same thing, this is exactly the same transform um, antiderivative that we'll get out of here, just the, the, with the only difference that v will be replaced by x, okay? So we get uh, this as our joint cumulative distribution function. Um, victory at last. We can use this function directly to find probabilities. We could not have used this joint PDF to find prob probabilities. We have to perform this transformation from uh, joint PDF to joint CDF in order to do something meaningful with this function. And for completeness sake, I finally show how to get from joint PDF to joint CDF. All you have to do here is to differentiate first with respect to x and then with respect to y. What do we differentiate? Well, we differentiate the uh, big F, which is our joint CDF. Okay. So for instance, I uh, this is our joint CDF. I have uh, multiplied these terms by themselves here, okay, because it's just easier to deal with the differentiation. I first differentiate with respect to x, and I got this, and then with respect to y, and I got our joint PDF, okay, so fantastic. We know how to switch from one to the other now. And differentiation is easy, uh, so uh, what's the derivative of one? Well, it's uh, zero. Derivative of e to minus x, with respect to x, well, it's actually uh, positive e to the minus x. How about this? Well, this has no x in it, so it's not, not function of x, so this is going to be 0. And how about this term here? Well, this term here is going to be exactly the same, but the sign will change here to minus, yeah. Okay, so um, you can follow it, I'm sure, quite easily. And now, last but not least, uh, now that we found our joint CDF, i.e. this one here, we can perform meaningful analysis. Okay, so for instance, we want to know the probability that both, okay, because we are dealing with joint CDF, so we are deriving joint probabilities that both shark and croc will kill this year. So we are at time zero, and we want to know the probability that both shark and the croc will kill this year. So basically, what do we have to do? We just plug the variables of interest directly into the CDF, okay? And here's the setup. Big F of 1 and 1 is the same as probability that our X variable will be less than 1 year and Y variable will be less or equal to 1 year, okay? So uh, X variable was croc and Y variable was shark. So the probability that shark and croc will attack in less than 1 or equal to 1 year. So here we've I've taken I've taken my CDF, which was this one, and all I've done is replaced x and y with one because we are trying to find out the probabilities associated with the with, with the attack in the first year. Okay, so um, this is what we get. It's around forty percent. Okay, we are now ready to tackle next question. What is the probability that the next fatal shark and croc attack will happen between year 3 and 4? Well, it's the same as probability that uh, our x variable is between year 4 and year 3, and our y variable is between year 4 and year 3. One could think that it's the same as uh, big F of 4 and 4 and minus big F of 3 and 3, i.e. probability that the next uh, croc and shark attack is less than 4 minus probability that next uh, the next shark and croc attack is less than 3 years. Um, it turns out that this is completely wrong, this reasoning. Uh, we have to apply something more complex. Um, the correct answer for the questions which ask for the joint probability of two, two random var variables between between two um, values, like here, i.e. 3 and 4, is the CDF of 4 and 4 plus the CDF of 3 and 3 plus minus the CDF of 3 and 4 minus the CDF of 4 and 3. This is exactly the same as solving this integral. But I think the advantage of using a, a closed form solution, i.e. using the CDF directly, is that you just plug in the values here, 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 here and here, rather than solving this double integral di directly. OK, 